Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, and we're gonna be looking at the current state of the market and look at some longer term momentum shift indicators, as well as some shorter term things to help give us an idea of where we currently are. So if you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. So the main thing we wanna do here is, is look fundamentally at where we are in terms of the grand scheme of a market cycle. And one of the things that we can do to, to look at this are to look at some of the longer term moving averages and see how they are playing out in relation to each other. So one of the things we can actually do is look at the 100 week and 200 week moving averages. Now, unfortunately, when you look at this chart, it only goes back a few years. Uh, you can see the current price of Bitcoin is 18200 at the time of this video. We're going to switch it over to the BLX, which only shows the closing price yesterday, so 17.7. So that's the uh, discrepancy between why it's lower than the current price. It's just because it shows the closing price from the last uh, from the last day. So if on this chart we put on our 100-week and 200-week moving averages, this is what you get. So the 200-week is the purple one. The 100-week is the blue one. And one of the things we've noted is that during the last market cycle, the 100 week basically came up to and hugged the 200 week before going back up. So you could argue that the price moved up and it, it essentially enabled these two moving averages not to cross. Okay, whereas so far in this market cycle, we've seen, we've seen a similar type thing where the 100 week is coming towards the 200 week and they start to get close to one another. However, so far, they have not converged. And in fact, in the short term, it appears that they're starting to diverge again. Now, it's kind of hard to tell exactly what's going on and the relationship between these two moving averages. So what we want to do is we want to put on um, basically the division of these two moving averages. So this, into this script here is simply the 100-week moving average divided by the 200-week moving average of the price of Bitcoin. Okay, so that's all we're looking at. We're looking at the 100 week moving average divided by the 200 week. And you can see a pretty nice, a pretty nice um, uh, wave here, essentially oscillating. So what we wanna do is we're just gonna take a line and we're going to try to see, okay, is this our general, uh, you know, outline of the market, right? Is, is this basically what we're going to be oscillating between uh, as we go through each market cycle? So this is what we're currently doing. You can see that we we started up here, we came all the way down, back up, slightly high or slightly lower than the past time, and then this one was slightly higher. So note that if you were to draw a line at this top all the way over, and this top all the way over, then we're not we're not quite reaching each extreme during the the, the next peak and the next valley. If we take a measured move from this top, which was the prior uh, global top, and, and go down, you can see it's approximately five or 6% away. And if we go to this point and go up, you can see it's about 10% away, or if we measure it down, about 8% or so. So one of the interesting things is, and we would expect this because we know, we recognize that macro level volatility of Bitcoin is in fact decreasing. Uh, with that in mind, we probably would expect these moving averages to not get so far apart from each other as we continue on throughout each market cycle in, in reference to prior market cycles. So one thing we may expect to see, and remember moving averages are lagging indicators. So the, the peak, the, the peak, well, I mean this, the, the peak of the moving average obviously is not the same time as the peak of say the price. Um, the peak of the division is also not the same time as the price. And in fact, the peak of this division around here was right before this major crash. So if you if you look at this peak here, from that point, the price of Bitcoin dropped 75%. And then if you look at the peak here, it was right before the price of Bitcoin dropped around 53% or so. And then the bottom was here, and it was basically before the price appreciated 3000% and the bottom, we just put the bottom in, um, that would correspond to this point. We obviously recognize diminishing returns, uh, but if we were to go up, say, you know, 
uh, if we were to go up say 3000%, which I don't think we would, that would be what we did from last cycle at this point, it would put the price of Bitcoin um, around $350,000. Uh, however, we, you know, we're, I think we're a little bit more pragmatic recognizing we're gonna get diminishing returns. We would probably, you know, expect something, you know, maybe somewhere in, in this ballpark between one and two hundred thousand dollars. And we would also expect this moving average to continue, you know, to do something like this, right? Where it, it continues to maybe oscillate between between this window. And maybe the next time we get back up to the top of the range, we can we can speculate on whether that means there's going to be another impending dump. So hopefully this analysis on the, the macro view of Bitcoin is useful. Now we also want to look at at the short term. And, and and when I say short term, I still mean somewhat relatively long term, but shorter than what we're currently looking at. So we're going to hide the 200 week and the 300 week. And now all we're going to do is we're going to put on the price minus the 20 week over the 20 week to see where we are. Now, we made a video about a week ago or so telling people to be cautious, uh, mainly just because of, of how inflated and extended the price of Bitcoin had gotten. We did drop back down shortly thereafter, and now we've, we've trended back up, not quite as high as we reached before. We reached around 19.5, we're currently at 18.2. Um, but some nice things about drops like that are that it, it does allow the 20 week moving average to slowly catch up. And if we were to draw a line at where the current 20 week moving average peaked, and this is the price minus the 20 week over the 20 week, you can see it, it had a short term peak right here, which also corresponded to some short term peaks of the 20 week moving average in the last market cycle. And, and you can see in fact that in the short term, we have come back down a little bit. So instead of being 54% over the 20 week moving average, uh, we dropped back down to about 44% over the 20 week moving average. So the nice thing is the price came back down a little bit. Um, it, allowed it, it allowed us to not be so overextended, but it also allowed the 20 week moving average to continue to play catch up. And the reason we want the 20 week moving average to catch up is because we know that in a bull market, the 20 week moving average is our bull market support line. And that when you hold it, sentiment can change on a dime, right? We hold it here, we go up. We hold it here, we go up. Hold it here, go up. Hold it here, back up. Here, back up. Here, back up. Don't hold it. Bad news bears, the grizzly bears are coming out. Not friendly neighborhood bears that you might see in these regions, but the grizzly bears and the polar bears are coming out, not the koala bears or the panda bears. So if we go back over, and look, right, we had a, a we held the 20 week moving average and then we, we started to trend back up. So with us trending back up, we also wanna recognize, just always keep an eye on the 20 week moving average. We'll probably do a new video soon talking about where it is as we, as we come into the new week. So right now, the 20 week moving average is around 12,300, 12,400. Obviously it depends on exactly what exchange you use, or we're dealing with approximately 12,400. We also know that the 20 week moving average is increasing by about $400 per week right now, just based on going back 20 weeks and investigating where we were 20 weeks ago. Um, if, you, if you go back 20 weeks ago, you can see we're replacing $18,000 or we're replacing a $9,000 with $18,000. You divide that by 20 because it's weighted in 1 20th, that'll give you about $400 increase. So we would expect the 20 week moving average to go up of at least about another $400 as we get in the, the weekly close here in, in a few hours. So with that in mind, the, the, the 20 week moving average will be inching ever so closer to $13,000. I don't think we're gonna quite get to $13,000 obviously with a 20 week moving average, but this week should get us a lot closer to it. And then next week we'll probably go into a $13,000 bull market support for Bitcoin. That's where we want the bulls to come out and hold the line in the event of a dump. We don't know when the dump will happen. Uh, by the time a true dump does happen, the price could be 14 or the, the 20 week could be at $14,000 or $15,000. But for now, the 20 week moving average is at 12,300, 12,400. So that's what we want to keep an eye on. Um, and, and, and obviously just keep an eye on it because ultimately we, we will re revisit it at some point. And when we do, there's no need to, to get super panicky Right? We just wanna make sure we hold the line and if we don't, we're essentially kicking the can down the road. So 
Hopefully you guys enjoyed the content. Remember to subscribe if you guys like the content. We also have exclusive material for those who want to join the premium list. We have a Black Friday sale going on for approximately one more week. So I know Black Friday is over, but we will extend it for at least one more week. So make sure you check it out if you want to get access to weekly reports, weekly videos, the premium Telegram alerts channel, the Telegram chat room, the risk dashboard, which is what I use to trade, some of the trading view indicators. We're gonna, I'm going to be adding more here in a, in a bit, but we have several trading view indicators. And then also the dynamic DCA dashboard. So if you guys are interested in the premium list, that's how I monetize the channel. No in, um, no in video promotions, no paid sponsorships or anything like that. No AdSense, no affiliate links. If you guys like the content, you can, you can join it and get access to more content. And at the very least, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel in the description below. Check out the Black Friday link to the premium list in the description below, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.